live from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We're German men now. We're German men now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. When you showed me that there trailer, <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, huh? I haven't seen that in a while. No kidding. Well, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome from welcome to When Jeremy Met Nam. And I am your excellent, excellent underboss host, <laughs> Nam Tran. And I'm always with me, the the most excellent host as well, the boss of the end of a game, or end better the known game. as the end. <laughs> As the in-game boss, Jeremy Lee Evans. Party on, Jeremy. Party on. I just want you to know for Halloween, I dressed like Barney. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate. That's, that's definitely unfortunate. Just a fun fact for the listeners. <laughs> definitely a fun definitely a fun fact there. Um, so, Jeremy, you selected your 90s pick. Yes. Um, which was amazing because I sat there and I thought to myself, like, you no, know, a young black male like you decided to choose a young black culturally cult following movie yes. like House Party. Well, now, why, why, why would you, why would you select that movie? <laughs> why, why, why would you select that movie? <laughs> so, um, House Party to me is a cultural hit among the black community and then spread out. Um, definitely. Definitely a really cool movie about just a house party, and it does have memorable moments, mainly the party itself. You might forget how it got to the party or what happened after the party, but everything happened at this party was memorable. And every time I I caught this movie, I always caught it at the party. I never knew it was at the beginning. I never knew how it ended. I always caught the party. And it even caught on through our generation, you know, through high school of the famous dance, the kid and play dance, everybody does. You know, everybody knows that dance. I even think the newer generation knows of knows of it through either their parents, they're around our age, you know, going into that. And the music's phenomenal. And it actually has a lot of predetermined um celebrities that happen to end up being together. Like, you know, you had uh uh Tisha Tile uh uh T I forgot her name, sorry, Tasha, whatever. But Martin and Gina basically, yeah, come together to do that show, their show Martin. So who knew that this Martin. is where they kind of got started? You know what I mean? And then, yeah. of course, Kid and Play, and then, um, then you had Rob Rob Harris to you know rest in peace for him. But he, you know, he went off to do Bebe's Kids. You had yeah. the you had the mute the the uh, the R and B group at the time, Full Force, coming in yeah. there, you know. There was a lot of hidden celebrity guests in there that were kind of on the on the rise, and this was the movie that triggered it. And I'm actually surprised that this movie became a huge cult following, let alone a really good movie, because I thought, you know, I thought honestly it wouldn't age very well. You know, I just thought, you know, it's probably be corny, but it actually does age really well. And I really love how fun it is. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And I think it just came at a good time when it came out in 1990. You know, I what, what about I you? Gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, I was gonna say, when was the last time you watched this movie? Um, a year. Um, a year ago? No, two years oh, ago. Okay. Two years ago. Oh, so it's been a little bit then. All right, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, for me, I remember. I, I kind of remember House Party when I was younger too, because I, I grew up and there was a moment in time where I, you know, I was a big fan of like Boys to Men and like the R and B and stuff like that. So House Party was kind of one of those things that just it looked fun. I mean, it, it just looked fun, but, you know, the more I think about it, the more I, I sit there and I wonder if it's kind of like a coming-to-age uh, style movie. Mm-hmm. Not not like your typical 80s, like coming-to-age style movies, but one of those ones where, you know, you you get to see, like, you know, these kids, like, you know, like I think they're high schoolers probably, more than likely high schoolers. Yeah, it almost um, feels like, and I'm pretty sure you're going this direction, it feels like it's their last hurrah before, like, graduation kind of Something along that lines, yeah. 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 So, being able to see just kind of that them having fun too, and of course, kid and play, and you know, which is weird because I really don't know where kid was it. This movie that made them popular, or were they popular beforehand? That part I can't remember. They were popular, but not until the movie made them bigger. I okay. think I think it's more they were popular among the the black community, but this mm-hmm. got them to be kind of worldwide community. Big. Was it for like? 
what was it for that they made? Because it wasn't for like them rapping or anything like that. Well, they rapped in the movie. They're known for rap. Oh, were they known for yeah, rap? Yeah, they were known for rap. Kind of around the okay. same time, per se, with Fresh Prince and Fresh Prince and Jeezy, uh, uh, DJ, DJ Jazzy, Jazzy, Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. So around yeah. that time. But, of course, you know, Fresh Prince was definitely bigger. But everybody knows Kid and Play. But I think this movie made them bigger because now okay. they're not known for rap. They're known for the dance. They're known for the dance in the movies and stuff like yeah. that. At least that's what that's 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 what uh, comes to mind whenever they bring it and whenever I hear a kid play and the hair. Yeah, yeah, the hairstyle definitely that's what definitely made them stand out. And it just it's so crazy. Not only it got one, it got three movies, which you know is it I, three or four? Four. I don't count four, but there's four. <laughs> but it kind of starts going downhill after the first one. This first movie I think was great, and I could I could walk away taking it for yeah. what it is, not even follow up. But I think the phenomenal part about it is years later that we get the reveal that Kid and Play are now a couple. So it's kind of funny. It comes in full circle. Yeah. You know? So, which which reminds me, does Friday come before this movie or after? Friday after. After, right? After. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, this this movie could have probably been one of those things that you could say kind of paved the way for, for like, Friday, too. Because Friday is one of those movies that I, I know for for a fact at some point down the line you and I will talk about. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you mention that because um, the actor that plays the dad, um, James Witherspoon, he's yeah. in this movie for a minute. He was the, he's the neighbor. Well. He's the neighbor that yells at the uh, uh, play's house, like, hey, turn that music down. So, you know, there is another person off the bat yes. that where he got started. And so... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so no, I mean, the, it, like for me, when I was younger, I, I don't remember why the influence was there, but I always was bit, kind of into black culture it, just during that time, anyways. And just I think a part of it, just in general, because I, I mean, granted, yeah, I grew up in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, which is very um, Caucasian based, but I mean, I think as a minority growing up, you kind of just cling to the things that, you know, you felt comfortable with. So mm -hmm. part of that felt comfortable to me too as well. So, and of course I always liked that R and B hip hop culture during that time. Cause that was, that was just kind of the, the thing. Thanks to bas basketball. I know that you and I were kind of big into basketball too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that just kind of helped our, our influences and stuff like that you know, too. It's funny because um, I really connect to this movie now than before only because later on through my high school years, I went to a, a lot of house parties, like a lot of house parties. And now Same I connect with that. Yeah. So now I connect this movie even more because the fact that like now, granted, I wish my house parties I went to were exciting as this movie was. Like I never been yeah. to a house party where everybody is dancing, everybody's breaking into breaking into a dance routine, all this stuff the DJ is going with. I wish I went to a house party like that, but you know, more normal house party is just more of like just chat and drink and hang out with your your group, whoever you are. But um, no, I just connect with connect with it because I enjoy going to house parties when I was younger, just to ex uh, just to go explore people's houses and wreck the place in some sort of way and don't have to worry about it. like I'm going home to my place now. Bye. So <laughs> no kidding, right? Mm -hmm. Were you were you a little older when you watched this one, or were you a younger kid? Is uh, I was you young. I was young when I watched this, but um, okay. I don't fully remember until I got older. Like I said, yeah. I don't remember the house party part. It wasn't until yeah. I older until I finally watched Holding and I get it. Yeah, and then so I, I was. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I think I was younger too because I, I think I was before my teens during the time when I actually watched this movie. And of course, now on my teens, thanks. I'm not gonna lie, I hadn't seen this movie in forever, so I almost completely forgot it. Besides, like the dance and everything like that, because. You know, you, you throw out the dance just randomly with people, and, and people just already know as well. So, let's get into our trailer talk. We talked, uh, so we watched House Party, um, the the classic trailer, classic trailer number one, which basically <laughs> I think there was only classic trailer number one, anyways, because everything right. else is House Party two, three, four, <laughs> which I I forgot they went to four. I remember the college. What was the college That's movie two. that they made? Was that two? Two is college. Wasn't it? Wasn't there another movie that was called something else besides yeah, House so Party? Yeah, so a lot of people might get confused because it's the only other movie Kid and Play has done, and I actually saw that movie. I remember that movie more than House Party yeah. at the time when I was younger, and that's Same Class thing. Act. Yeah. Yeah, and Class Act can well, be... Honestly, I feel like Class Act could be a spinoff to the House Party. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they, they almost act the same, but, you know, you got Hillary from Fresh Prince in that movie. You yes. know, a bunch of other people in there, and they... And, they don't have like a dance party and stuff, but they do like still do some dances on some sort of way. So yeah. yeah. 
And I was gonna say, I think his, I think uh, Kid changed his hair up on that one too. Yeah, well. he did because, um, and that might be a pick on my pick later on. But you know, that's the movie where they switch roles. You know. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's very true. All right, so we watched classic trailer number one on YouTube, number one, and it was the classic trailer. So Jeremy, man, why don't you tell me what you thought about the trailer? Um, I loved it. Surprisingly enough, I loved it. I think it's straight to the point. The music was great for it. It didn't need to have a narrator. You knew what it was. The person that edited it did a great job of saying, here's a story. Here's a situation. Here's where you really want to get to in this movie. And then ended up with some little funny cue points and everything like that. Um, I learned a new name for a, uh, for a woman. Um, I think it was Lo- Lo- Lovafa. I forgot. I forgot. I just said it to you earlier and I, <laughs> I, I forgot. I, like, it, it was, it was a I think it was Lukefia so. or something like that. I was like, that's new. That's a new name. And so and yeah. I'm excited because now it gives me triggered up to like, what other ridiculous names are in this movie? But no, the trailer did a good job just doing, doing a short bout. I think about a minute. I think it's like a minute trailer minute minute and a half I yeah think. yeah it got the point across and that's what house party needs to be look you know the house party here's the cast come join the party so exactly and I, i'm gonna I'll follow your sentiment there i think it was very straightforward too as well like it was straight to the point that hey this is a we're we're just trying to get to a house party because mm-hmm. i mean all, like there's going to be ladies there we want to meet some ladies and we're going to enjoy our time. And, as you know, our parents are just kind of our, our dad is trying to, to keep us from going there. But I like the fact that it was a very simple trailer. There's no there's no narrative narrative that really needs to be shown or talked about. They they portrayed that it was going to be a good time and a good ride. So that that's pretty much what they portrayed. And that was pretty much exactly what I got out of it when I was when I was watching the trailer. So I'm looking forward to the movie. Oh, For yeah. me, I think I think it's a I think it's a thumbs up. Something I would like to go see just because I think it's a good good thing that um, it would be a good time. I guess that would be what I'm trying to portray here. I, it's, it's just gonna be a good time watching it. I would love to see this classic movie revisit in a theater. I don't think it'll ever happen, but if it was coming to theaters, I would go out and watch this again in theaters because I will. Cause I think this would be a fun movie to go watch in theaters. It would, yeah, it would. It would definitely be interesting. I, I, there's a few movies I think nowadays. I think uh, you know, especially now during the global crisis for all of us, you know, it'd be nice to try to find ways to save like the movie theaters and stuff like that. Because I know right now for them, it's not exactly going. It's not exactly green pastures for them, especially with the streaming service. But you know, I think you and I talked about it before that you know at some point down the line, it, it seemed like that was the way it was going to go. That it was going to go into streaming and then it was going to get people to to pay more money while at the streams. To, mm-hmm. to check out some of the movies yeah now i'm not gonna lie not all the movies are worth it but there's there's some out there so yeah but you know you and i both gave thumbs up for uh, house party we're both excited to watch this again for jeremy it was a year for me it's been like decades <laughs> so right. you know look forward to giving the, uh, you guys our opinion on on it and look forward to anything that you guys might have to say about it so we'll catch you guys after jeremy's commercial and after we finish watching the movie, and hopefully when you finish watching the movie. All right. Um. And welcome back. A hundred minutes later, you have hopefully just seen House Party, the 1990 movie, the rated R 1990 House Party. This movie released back on March 9th, 1990. Had a budget of two point five million. Did did a box office of twenty six point four million dollars. So Jeremy, you hadn't seen it this movie for about a year. Mm-hmm. Is this movie kind of what you remembered after that one year? Your love is so good. Your love is so good. Ain't my type of hype, baby. Um, <laughs> no, um, no, it's everything I, re- I remember from it. Um, still, still love, still enjoy this movie. It's still entertaining. Mm-hmm. But for anybody that wants to watch this movie for the first time or revisiting, I think they're going to remember that you can tell that the house party itself was the main draw for this and everything around it is dry. And the reason I say that is the beginning of 
the movie is a little a little slow and trying to build up to this moment, even to the part where like there's some really cheesy, corny kind of stuff on the way there. But once you get to the house party, you forgive everything that build up to that. You know, that's how good to me how that house party was. But after that house party is where everything went downhill. It just started kind of dying off. It kind of got boring. You didn't know where this was going to go. You couldn't live up because the house party is a very long scene. It's the it's the meat. It's the meat of the movie. It's the second act. And after that, it was like, after the party, it's like, well, what else you got? You know, it was better off to end the movie with maybe the party getting shut down or something bad happened than more of going down this another like silly silly little ride at the end that kind of is kind of familiar to the beginning you know and yeah go ahead, go ahead. no go, no, ahead. No, go ahead okay uh, um but i before we even go into details i just want to say that it does have a weird pace and i still enjoy it because i think that the house party stuff is still great and i think a lot of people that go to remember that movie will always remember the house party but easily easily forgettable of how they got there and what happens after so yeah i see you know i actually didn't mind the first half of the movie like the whole setup part because you know you really i think it was a good point of trying to get you set up on um learning who uh, the two the two gals are yeah the two ladies Sh- the uh, yeah shireen and sydney yeah they, i think there was a, a little bit of i would say it's not I mean, all right. So this movie is one of those movies you watch to watch. You don't sit there and watch and try to pick it apart just because, right. just because it's not going to be a masterpiece like the like some of the movies we choose. We're not looking at this in in a sense of, oh, is it a masterpiece or is it just something that was entertaining, right? But I like I like the way it was set it up where because you know you got to meet the dad, you got to meet the two the two ladies which were important and i think you got to meet kid and play and you get to see the like a little bit of character development from kid and play and kind of meet and seeing what the baseline is for for them you get to see what they where they're at and how you, you baseline them and their growth throughout this movie whether it's just a little bit or a lot um, same thing with the gal same thing with uh, martin's character which i really can't say his name um it's uh, uh it's Badal. What's his it's, name? It's Balau. It's like saying Balau, Balau but you're just putting a hyphen in between two. Okay, so Balau. 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 So, Balau. Yeah, yeah. Balau. So him, him Sydney, and is it, Sh- was it Sharice? No, it's Shireen. Sharice. Shireen. 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 Yeah. And Shireen. 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 Yeah. Shireen. <laughs> so, so you kind of get that nice. Of course, you get to see full force and full force. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know, I didn't really actually. I really, the more I watched Full Force in the in the movie, mm-hmm. I don't really remember them back in the day for some reason. They they had a very small run. Like we're talking about, like late eighties, and then they kind of started shiveling out, and they were only reno- known for the house party movies afterwards, right? With two and three. Okay. But other than that, music it, it it went downhill from there. They weren't really that big anymore. So. All right, so so that's I, I was wondering, yeah, because it's like I really don't remember Full Force, but I, I mean I saw them do, uh, you know, they were basically was it the main the main three uh, mm-hmm. villain? Yeah, the main villain. So, but no, I was gonna say I I agree that there was good development for the characters. I guess I was saying more it's a weird pace because, and while I'll, I'll let you finish, it's just more of how to get to that party setup took a little yeah. bit of an awkward turn, especially mainly the kid and the, and uh, stab in them. So anyways, yeah. Yeah. I didn't mind it so much. The first, the first quarter or the first, the first whole setup of the movie too, as well. Like I, I get that as well. The next with you, I do agree. Cause after the house party, it really just kind of went downhill. And for you and me, it's funny. Cause we talked about the last movie being like, was I think like an hour, a little bit over an hour and a half. This movie was an hour and 40 minutes, which technically speaking, I think you and I could probably cut about 10 minutes. Of I this agree. Movie and, and I thought that too, 10 minutes. Yeah. It's like, I still enjoyed it just all the way through as well, but you know, you could easily cut, cut the movie for, cut the movie 10 minutes and, and still been fine because that prison scene, that whole, the whole, those, that whole scene over there and that stuff, you're just kind of like, all right. I think taking them home or taking taking the taking Sydney and Shireen home, um, then him ending the, the house party whenever, you know, 
the house party whenever whenever the dude somebody dropped a log and dropped a log <laughs> and when, in, in the future we would choose and, you know it wasn't an upper decker but you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you then, know, and it broke like who yeah. who who really messed up that bathroom like that Jeez, you know, and it broke in a way that it didn't like clog, and just like the water yeah. came up, it just like it wouldn't flush at all. Yeah. Like, what did they do? Yeah, what did they do? They must have dropped a couple upper deckers in in order for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, so yeah, you know, it's funny that you started you start off the conversation really with a song. You know, this movie came this movie came about because of a song, right? I actually did not do the research of how House Party got created. Yeah. So go ahead. So House Party came up. There was a there was a song that I don't I don't remember who, but you know, and they were thinking back in the day there wasn't really a lot of black music videos, mm-hmm. which is true during like the during the late eighties and nineties there really wasn't like a lot of black music videos per se. Mm-hmm. Or at least that was true to true to true to culture. No, yeah, no. A lot of people fought for like MTV, complaining yeah, that you yeah. don't show a lot of uh, black videos and whatnot. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know, he pitched the idea. He pitched the house party idea about you know as a, as a music video, and the dude was like, and then the other dude was like, no, that's a movie. And there you go. And this mm-hmm. is how it was born. The song though was interesting though because I wasn't. Like I thought to myself, really, they, that was the song that made them think they wanted to make a house party. It was uh, what was it? Um, it was Will Smith and Jazz and Jazzy J- uh, mm-hmm. DJ Jazzy J. Mm-hmm. It was uh, was it the Elm Street one? I don't know a lot of their hits except you know, Parents Don't Understand and all and um, Boom Boom Shake the Room. I, I don't know a lot of their catalog actually. To tell you the truth. Yeah, like something, something on Elm Street or something. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up here in okay. a little bit. But that was the song that they wanted, and they actually wanted um, instead of Kid and Play, who uh, who met each other actually in a house party at a house party. Mm-hmm. As there were two separate groups during that time. I think Play was Playboy, and Kid was like Kid Cool or something okay. like that. Or, okay. I for, I forgot exactly, but um. So I feel like like all the chips just fell in the right place, and this is how it became what it is. I'm guessing. Yeah, because I was gonna say if we watch, if you and I watched this movie, and it was Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff during this movie, doing this movie instead, mm-hmm. completely different movie. Oh, it would be. It would definitely be. Completely different mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. I don't know if it would necessarily be as as bad though, because that was some of my own complaints too as well. Is that, you know, this movie was rated R. I don't know. I think, I don't know if it was necessarily something that I was, it was a rated R movie. I don't know if it necessarily needed to be rated R. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you felt that way too. Um, I think it's because of mainly, not so much the cursing. There was some cursing, but I don't think that was the main draw. Yeah. The draw was a lot of the sexuality in this, in you windows in this movie. That that, yeah. that push in there, and I don't know. Maybe it was supposed to be PG thirteen, but where they were going, it made it just probably hit that R, but hit that R line barely or something like that. I agree, I mean, but I know I understand why is R because of that. So yeah, I, I agree too. I agree. I understand why it's R because I mean they they use the N word quite often in the movie and the language and and just the sexual innuendos that weren't necessarily the. And you and don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting there saying that they they can't use the N word or whatnot. It's just for me, it was just one of those things that you know, current 2020, it kind of throws me off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, not so me. I was like, so <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously not you. And, and and of course, during that time, during during that time, even now, and within 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 that culture, you know, they're going to, and it's fine too. I have no problem with that. Again, it just it just kind of threw me off. I don't know why it threw me off. Mm-hmm. Maybe because I'm just so like I'm not around it as I, I'm not around it like I was before, and I'm just yeah. Like, All right. Um, but with that, next course, the gratuitous sex scene that didn't need to be in there either. Yeah. So with that being said, um, there was some there was some good moments before the house party that I want to talk about before we get to the meat because the house party is is really the meat of of the movie as we said before. So even at the beginning, like you were saying, it has a little bit of character development. And whatnot. Um, 
there was some parts there that was a little it felt like a little bit of waste of time to me and then there were some parts that were well there were some parts i questioned a lot of but then also yeah. too at the same time it was a felt waste of time you can tell that even though we still at the beginning to this party you can feel you feel like that they were still just trying to add something to it so we don't get to the party too early you know they're trying to like we got to get this movie at least over an hour and 30 minutes what can we do to add to keep getting this since this main movie's taking the portion of it and you know some of the parts were a little kind of like cheesy to the point where like um um the chasing was the full force and all them leading to that dinner party which i understand the dinner party because that comes back full circle towards the end but at the same time it still kind of felt like a little bit of waste to kid rapping because you know you'll find out that kid and play do rap in this movie and there's a reason why they rap in this movie um but the whole getting there was a long stretch. On, on top of that, the whole cops coming every five seconds was a little weird. Is it's like, do you guys just drive in a circle? It was like, <laughs> you know, it's like it just kept getting, it just kept, the, it got tiring. I guess is the word because you're dealing with them being chased to catching the guy, this guy having sex with his wife around this fence. He grabs a gun and shoots to the dinner party, to the cops pulling them over. And let me tell you something. Those boys stab in the gang. Um, you know the the black guy. Sorry, my language here, but you know the one black guy's like, "We're gonna kick your fucking ass." You know that guy. Yeah. Um, he them to me, they should have been in jail like a long time ago, based on this movie. Like, <laughs> because yeah. it's, like, it's like, first of all, you should have been expelled from school. Just the just the way this was going at the beginning of this movie, but just the point of chasing all night and doing all the mischief that you have. It's so funny. Like, how did you get out of jail? Which apparently in this movie, an hour is like 30 minutes, I guess. I don't know. But they get out very quickly and go out do mayhem again or something like that. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. Even to the point where... um, even, no, that, no, that's mainly it. It's mainly the full force of stabbing them and Kid that really kind of made it confusing. Because I did enjoy the Sydney and Shireen... We're seeing their friendship of picking them up in the projects, learning that sh that Sydney is from. I don't want to say. She, I guess she's from a wealthy family per se. She, she, yeah, she, she. It's two different, two different sides of the coin. Shireen is is in the projects, and then yeah. uh, and I, I think they touched on that a little bit more when you get into like mm -hmm. the house party two and three and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny you say that because no, they don't. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. God, a, just, a, I, a little bit, a, a little bit with uh, Sydney, I think. Yeah. Um. But even to the point where I did enjoy, you know, uh, Bilal in play, you know, him picking him up, doing all this stuff, you know, getting left behind because of the girls and everything like that. I did. I did enjoy that because other than play, weirdly enough, he's the only person we never saw his room. Like play never showed his room. I was always curious. Like, what does play's room look like? Because Bilal's room is crazy, right? Every girl pinned up girl on the wall, followed by two giant speakers. And it's like, that room is nuts. And then you have kids' room that's like all these microphones. Looks like that he was, I guess, influenced the podcasting in some, some way. There's so many mics in that room. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Which, by the way, would you rock those pajamas that he, <laughs> that he woke up in the beginning? <laughs> Probably. Okay, cool. But other than that, I did like the little buildup up to this party. But I think what hurt it a little bit was – the um of the chase of kid and stabbing his gang only because i get it but i think it went a little too long at the beginning part what do you think um the beginning actually i can see where it went a little bit long in your opinion i I'm, a lot of, i think a lot of my focus was towards the end where it just kind of died okay the movie kind of died to me i mean it was kind of nice because in a weird way it's kind of like a it's it's like a black culture john hughes movie where like the setup is kind of slow, but like you know to get to everything, but there's a setup to where you have to meet everyone mm -hmm. and kind of get everyone. It's interesting. I was watching the movie and I was just thinking of present day 2020, and I thought that was interesting how they perceived the cops in the movie, and then until now, I mean, nothing's in, in a lot of senses nothing has changed other than you know, other than the violent endings that normally happen that ha that do happen in in the current day society, but. It was kind of interesting to see that that kind of like dynamic, especially when with the dad and the cops. You know, the cops, which I thought was absolutely hilarious too, mm -hmm. as well. You know, it's 
So it's like none of your goddamn business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you, you know, so you you kind of see that cultural that cultural impact, which still resonates today, even back then. You know, as as well, the house party scene, you know, was 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 pretty cool i i hadn't been to very many house parties personally so yeah, i really so, don't yeah let's get know. into the meat of this yeah so you haven't you said you haven't been to a lot of house parties okay go ahead yeah so i hadn't been really to a lot of house parties per se and the house parties i go to are generally like you know mostly asian and stuff like that so it's a little bit of a different vibe i would say um it would be a little bit more of a different vibe um than it than what you guys have going on with you i know you said you've been to a lot of house parties what do you think I've been to a lot, a lot of house parties. I have never been to a house party like this. Like, okay. this is a house party I want to go to. Most house parties I go this to is, is mostly this just... This is a fan station, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 most house parties I go to were more just hang around, drink, and chat and stuff. It's not coming in to a giant dance party, you know? Mm. I think I did remember a small one when I was younger in Stillwater. I wanted to say, I think so. I think, but I, it's kind of fuzzy, but I never came in and get high down like, Hey, what's up? Come in, come in, you know? And then, you know, I'm dancing my way into the floor. Like kid did in the movie. I never got that with a DJ playing and everything. I never get that. I always wanted to go to that kind of party. I'd be just so much fun, especially like the young me with my whack Mac game, trying to do something with that, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah. and so I always wanted to do that and just, break out in the middle of a circle and just show out your moves and everything like that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy that because I get kind of jealous seeing that. Cause it's like, Oh man, that just looks awesome because through that whole time it was about 40 minutes of the day of this, of this house party. And it never slowed down. It was entertaining all the way across with just great memorable moments as we're slowly starting to see more kid, more of these kids, have their little little shine in there from from the boy chill you'll you'll know about chill um to you know more about shireen and sydney a little bit of more play and kid balau you know even some of the one-off people in there and you're getting these moments that is that you know would happen at a house party you know yeah you know this the point like um you know, just by people don't want to dance with the right girl. They, they're they trying to get that one girl, but they're trying to deal with that one girl. Um, you get those guys that don't know how to dance while the girls know what they're doing. So they're kind of like out of they feel out of place. You know, yeah. you get the guy that bumps the DJ counter after he tells you to, hey, get away from the mic and everything like that. Uh, all the food is gone. Um, uh, furniture might break. All that kind of stuff um, with just jammed out music, which is funny because. I wonder how blast those speakers were going because I know the movie's portraying it like it's loud, but I'm kind of curious, like in reality, like how loud is that house bumping? You know what I mean? And yeah. so, and I was just excited and smiling because like, I, I love that stuff. It almost feels like it's almost like a musical per se, because just the best, cause you know, the best part, and we'll get into that soon, but is the part where it's uh Sydney and Shireen versus Kid and Play. And that's the highlight right there because yeah. anybody that watched that movie at the time just didn't know what they were getting into seeing that scene. And I think people now go into that seeing that would be kind of like fascinated by, oh, so this is where it got started and carried on. So yeah. What about you? No, I completely agree with you. I think this is the heart the, and pretty much like, you know, you know, if 80% of the movie was stuff that, you know, if we were to tell you to watch like 80% of the movie, this would be the 8% of the movie because the rest of the 20% is just kind of filler mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a weird way. It's kind of filler. Um, this part of the movie is what makes it so fun, enjoyable, um, wholesome in a way. But, you know, it, it, and you can connect to it. Even if you really didn't go to the house party, house, a house party growing up, or that many house parties growing up, mm -hmm. you can connect to a character, if not some of the characters in the movie, um, just because, like, for me, I connected with a, with Kid on quite a few levels, you know, just as far as just, like, imagining how my game, quote, unquote, made <laughs> Right. And, you know, you how wide I how wide eye I was in the next, you know. 
course, I have nowhere near the dance skills necessary for to be in a house party. I would be on that. I would just kind of stand there and do whatever. You would be. Actually, you would be the guy in the uh, in the tux that like yes. kid. Show me some moves. Come on, man. The the one that was bumping yeah. that girl. She fell to the to the wall. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. He did. He, he did the spin and he fell down. Yeah, yeah. That's you. yeah. That guy. I can't think of his name either, but I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. He's chill. It, he's chill's it, friend. So, yeah. Yeah, he's chill's friend. Is he? Uh, is he? He's not. Is it? It's not Pee Wee. Uh, Peanut. It's a peanut. peanut. I don't. I think so. Oh, no, Groove. I, I think it's Groove. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 I remember it was like Groove and Chill. Yeah. 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 I think his name is Groove. Groove and Chill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I can see myself being him for sure because you know I'm just like I'm gonna I'm gonna need some liquid uh, I'm gonna need some liquid courage to do <laughs> yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a surprise that you know you didn't see that many drinks in this movie. Didn't you notice they were trying to like secretly add in to like be aware of alcohol is bad for you awareness kind of things like hey man that's it gonna was make weird. you dumb yeah. it's gonna make you dumb <laughs> it's like man you shouldn't be drinking yeah. that <laughs> it's like what yeah it was weird like yeah like the underlying theme and that underlying theme of it then it's you know there's you know no problems with being an absolute womanizer all the way through <laughs> <No>. and through <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and treating women like crap like through half half the movie but you know just don't drink <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't be a douche with it okay you could be a terrible yeah. person but don't be a douche about it yeah <laughs> Which, you know and you know I say that you know there were some parts that were cringy with with how they treated how they talked about women and stuff but of course like you know a product of the of the eighties and the nineties that was kind of how it is quote unquote locker room talk yeah but I would say just for Shireen's case Shireen got her hits in too per se yeah yeah so at least it it gave they kind of gave us a little bit of the a little bit of women shout out not in a mean way i'm just saying like yeah. at least we got to see that the, this, this one guys, of the girls yeah. is getting her cake and eating it too in some sort of way instead of being Laura like oh okay so yeah and i, I agree with you I, I think that's the part where you kind of like all right so they kind of try to even it out a little bit because i mean with with shireen and sydney and how those two interacted and just kind of like the wholesome feeling you get when between kid and sydney Mm. Like their their scenes and stuff like that, you know, you can completely you can completely understand people being in those situations where you're like, all right, well, you know, I didn't exactly get the girl I wanted, but I really, you know, I I might go to this other girl too, who I think is just as cute as well and stuff like that as well. It's one of those things like you didn't know the perfect girls for you. And what's the sorry? <clears throat> you didn't know the perfect girl was in front of you because you didn't yeah. look hard enough, and it kind of yeah. just fell in its lap. Which that kind of was a little wholesome towards towards the end when they had their moment. Uh, yeah. So I did appreciate that, especially he had a pretty good line. I like, you know, yeah. the whole like he's honest. He was totally honest with her. Like, look, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I would have put Shireen over you. You know, because you know, um, I want a friend. Than, than just a, a a friend or a lover because I see you, I see you as a friend, yeah, yeah, and that was a good line. That was a really good uh, line. Yeah, so it's like I see you as a lover, or I see you as a friend, but I think lovers should be friends, you know, or can be friends too, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is a yeah. good line. Yeah, which is a, which is either you know up for debate whether you think that's a smooth recovery or not. Mm -hmm. But I mean, basically, in a way, you could just be like, you know, if I was sitting here, I'd be like, so you just wanted the F, to f uh, to f uh, just wanted to bang uh, Shireen. Shireen. Just at this moment, at this moment, it's like it's like f Mary and kill. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that's, we know that's the game, right? We know the thing about also with Connect in high school for for better or for worse, it was mainly guys trying to just show how much game they got, and that's what we saw yeah. in this whole movie at the party. You know, like yeah. I want to get that girl, especially with Groove and uh, Chill, which they say the signature line where they saw Shireen's like, ooh scandalous you know like like that's the moment and i and i i relate to that because that's what we had to do well not had to do but that's what we wanted to do we wanted to show our friends that like hey i got mac i can get her or i can get her i'm a good dancer i can get her you know yeah it was bragging rights it, as shitty as it sounds that's what it, that's what it was going to these parties and it was the girl's job to kind of see if they could find the right man that really fits them or take care of them in some sort of way. And that's why even though you saw a bunch of guys get on some girls, there were some girls that turned down 
a lot of guys in this movie too, weirdly yeah. enough, based on their looks. You know, yeah. like you know. Well, I mean, it's the truth. That's what happens. I mean, that's how it happens. Mm-hmm. And so that really felt like high school in that kind of way. And I, I want people to kind of understand that, like that was high school. High school was mm-hmm. about like trying to get that girl that you always wanted. And this party was more of the um, like the no law land. Like it, any yeah. anything's up for grab. If you can get her, then get her. You know, and that's why I kind of really like Shireen and Sydney's relationship in this movie because they were kind of like one up each other, but as really good friends, they're like, "Hey, you want them? Go get them. Show me up." Yeah. You know, and and that was a lot cuter than the other way with playing kid. Oh so. yeah, with with playing kid, it was it was absolutely it is a true kind of like it's the mentality. It was the mentality back in high school for, for a lot of people, you know, where there was girls that they want to date and then it's people who they felt that had more game than the others and stuff like that as well. And also it was, you know, the misconception of the idea that, you know, looks was everything too as mm-hmm. well and, and stuff like that too. So it was, it, it played well. I mean, even though, like I said, it, it, you know, at times it felt cringy on how they talked about women and stuff like that in the movie. Like that was kind of like the mentality when you were a young teenage teenager, whether it was good or bad, whether you feel that was good or bad, that was kind of the mentality you had, even though when you grow older as an adult, it's completely different than what you believe. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, I didn't, I didn't get awkward as, or cringy as you did because, um, I bet I, I, I did those stupid stuff. So it's kind of like, I get it you know, for what that was. So I didn't get cringy about it. I was more having a good time of how bad some of the game is. That what made me laugh so yeah. hard because I I know I had some bad games. So I know that, especially like one of my favorite is Bilal going up and he finally got his cake and eat it too, doing a slow cut with a girl. And, and he's just macking away and this girl's getting awkward. And I know, I know that was awkward because I, I seen that before. And she, yeah. in, in his line, in the line he said, he's like, girl, you soft and comfy like hush puppies. You're warm and fluffy like buttermilk biscuits. And I'm like, oh my God, that's freaking hilarious. It's terrible. But it's so freaking funny because I heard that kind of lines before, you know? And it's just, it brings back so much memory of that, especially this movie is so much older. By the time I went to high school and finished in 2003, that that Mac game was still going corny like that. And that's yeah. so funny. And mm-hmm. so. Um, no, and I was going to say for you, you, you said that you did that stuff back when you were young, when you were younger. And I was like, no, I'm not in it. I'm not innocent in this at, at, at all. Because, I mean, that was that was kind of like you know, the, the peer pressure of trying to be cool amongst mm-hmm. your friends especially amongst your guy friends, right, mm-hmm. was to say and do stupid stuff. You know, it's just seeing that and just thinking to myself, man, that's exactly how it was. That's cringy, you know. Mm-hmm. I was and, – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It, oh, I was going to say the Mac game is actually kind of interesting because those corny lines I would still use today. <laughs> and the thing the thing about it is, is like, I have – I felt that I've made a personality within myself to be that kind of corny dude – make stupid jokes and and be corny but do it purposely that it's actually kind of cute in a way so i was able to make it work for me like i would do those stupid lines today just because it fits my personality i don't definitely i rec i don't recommend anyone do it if you don't fit the, if it doesn't fit you you know if you're like deadpan serious that is not the way to go just mm-hmm. telling you you are going to fail miserably if you do <laughs> i remember before we get to the one of the big questions i gotta ask you um I remember there was a golden rule of guys, um, particularly black guys, and going to parties or clubs or whatever. Is well, there were two rules. One, don't walk, don't leave without getting a number, and don't leave until you at least dance with a girl. That was kind of like the two rules. It's like if you didn't get both, at least get one or the other. And That's I, and, I and, and the reason I brought that up because this was house party was doing through behind the scenes, you know, people were asking, let me get that number to trying to get that girl, you know, especially like the perfect opportunity. Now the perfect opportunity was the part when it was time for the duo part and Balau was doing the switch part, like switch and everybody switching to get with the partners. That was your chance to like really get on a girl <laughs> and maybe get a number on that. Now, the big question is, 
is how did you feel about the du- the duo dance between Shireen and Sydney against Kid and Play, which that's where the signature dance comes from, as people call it the Kid and Play dance, uh, yeah. which I know how to do that dance. I have taught that dance before. Um, but how did you feel of like how they built it up as Kid was showing somebody going right into just this iconic dance scene? How would you feel about that? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this too, just because I'm gonna just try to boost my ego here for a second. I, I I I see the dance. I can I know how to do it as far as the steps is concerned. I just not coordinated <laughs> to do it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. My feet won't go that fast, and even currently now, my feet won't definitely go that fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that was the part that that really kind of help them help make that movie though is like that that scene that whole setup where you know groove was drink himself telling kid to teach him how to play or telling play or a kid how to teach him how to dance and kid was like nah i can't you know what i will yeah. <laughs> they, they start doing it and it's that dance off right i thought that dance off worked out really well and i really liked it a lot in fact seeing it again actually put a smile to my face and i popped i popped for the, that part of the movie i think it's probably one of the it was the it was the it was it was the icing on the cake for the best part of the movie which mm-hmm. which was the party the house party itself so mm-hmm. i absolutely loved it i thought it was a smooth transition and i thought it worked out, worked out just perfectly and and it and it started that kind of like quick pace or speed up that relationship with uh with kid and play and uh sydney and shireen Mm -hmm. it's almost like weirdly enough they were both doing kind of like a mating dance to show who they are like like look look what i got you what you got and you know like well i got this what you guys like oh okay well can you do this you know and you can feel you can feel the like the vibe between those and it they did such a good job of that scene that made me feel like i was there weirdly enough like I'm like, okay. Like all you were right. sitting there watching it, yeah. Yeah, I was like, all right, I'll see. Let's do this, you know? And and I don't know how many times they took to do that scene, but just the fact that they I like the kid and play dance, but the girls, God, they were sexy when they did their parts. It was just hot. Oh yeah. It was just hot oh, yeah. the way they were doing. They were just working it. And they, this this two still know how to do that dance till today too as well. They uh, Oh it, really? It's, it's, they know they know how to do the moves and everything. They yeah, still know how to do it. yeah. And you know, I knew that like kid and play were gonna have to step it up with the kid and play dance. Especially, I think yeah. a lot of people forget how the whole dance goes. They really know the more like you know X walk yeah. tap and then X walk tap yeah, and so walk dumb. around each other, right? But they don't mm-hmm. know the part where you're supposed to go backwards and kick and all this kind yeah. of. Stuff. I don't think a lot of people um, know that whole dance. Um, yeah. But that is a good map to see that. And then just going right into the next part. It was just a good transition of everything. And on top of that, good choice for the music. The music was great for that. Um, really, really good choice. And that song is is from Full Force. That was, that was their song that they played. Uh, oh, okay. Ain't, ain't My Type of Hype. Yeah, that's their oh. song that was playing during that part. Um, the music itself at the house party, um, I want to say it was 50-50. There was some that were okay. Like there was a Flavor Flav song. I don't know if you heard Flavor Flav in there. There was on. It was okay. Um, there were. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the music. Music was was hit and miss for me. Yeah, I did like the music overall. I'd, in the end, I, I liked the music overall. But overall, through the movie, it was kind of hit and miss. Yeah, I think that. what was the miss was the downtime. You know, when there was conversation, <laughs> but when it was yeah. time to do a dance scene and stuff, the good choice of music for those particular parts. So yeah, that's fair to say. Nam, it comes now to you with two cool. Uh, this one question before I ask you the next one is: Who do you think was the better dancer out of Kid and Play? Or you can tell me out of Sydney and her and Sydney and Shireen and those two. Who do you who do you think was better? So I mean, I, I, I'm going to say Shireen mostly because she's a fly girl. <laughs> okay, I agree. With that. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoyed watching them, and I'll probably watch it again. Um, but I, Shireen, for sure, because I know she was a fly girl from In Living Color. Mm-hmm. But you can tell that she was a little smoother in her dance, too, as well. Um, in this aspect, I would say play was better at, at the dancing. Okay. Because a, a part of me – so play weirds me out in a, in a way. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he reminds me like, every time I see you play, and I remember thinking this back in the day too. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you know what I'm going to say. I'll what, take what a guess. Think, I'll take a guess. I think it wears yeah. you out because maybe it's just me, but he reminds me of that basketball player from Charlotte. Okay, thank you. That was exactly, that's exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, really, automatically, yeah, automatically. Exactly what I'm saying. He reminds yeah. me of Larry Johnson. That's from, who it is. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The Charlotte Hornets back in the day. Yes, Grandma Ma. If you want to, if yes. you want to find out who he is, great. Look up Grandma Ma. That's the Nike commercials he did back in the day. Yes. He every time I look at him, I think to myself, he looks like Larry Johnson. And even where the way he dresses is like the Charlotte colors. I think he knew he looked like Larry Johnson, so he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it weirds me out every time every time i see him do that mm-hmm. i think in the movie he's the better dancer okay um i think in real life he's probably the better rapper but okay. i think i think kid had the better lyrics and the raps in this movie okay but the other weird thing about kid though to me is that he sounds like vanilla ice when he raps he does you're absolutely right um, or vanilla ice it, got his influence from kid <laughs> yeah, maybe, because, maybe so. Because Vanilla Ice does rock the hair, trying to rock his hair like him, sort of, some kind of, sort of way. Yeah, it's, it's just a, not that it's, long. Yeah, so. it's, it's white people hair, so it can't be like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. So no, no, you're you're right on the hair, dude. It's like he might have been influenced because, like, when I first when I first was looking, I was looking down and typing my notes, and I heard him rap in his room. You know, mm-hmm. uh, kid rap in his room. And I was like, dude, that sounds like Vanilla Ice. What the hell? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it, it threw me off with that as well. Um, so those are the two that I feel. And before we get into yours, I'll ask a question too as well, and next you can answer it after you give your answer. Okay. Answer which what two that you felt. Okay. So, um, so kind of like what we talked about. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, kind of like what we talked about back in our singing in the rain, singing mm-hmm. in the rain episode, which is also a good episode too. You guys yeah. should check it out. Good movie too as well. You should Wonderful check that movie. out. Yeah. So did they just know how to dance with each other like that? Like Kid and Play and Shireen and or did they actually like, all right, let's go out to the lawn here. We're gonna go out to the yard, we're gonna practice this because we know people are gonna we gonna people are gonna try to serve us. So we 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 we, we gotta practice Shireen, 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 get over here. We we gotta practice. <laughs> I you know, I curious. am oh is that is that the is that the last question I'm sorry yeah that was my question yes yeah. um yes I think they knew uh based on what we've seen the relationship of uh, I mean their friendship yes you can tell that play and kid had hung out all the time like the way they are and you can tell just the way of their flow of everything you can tell like okay they 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 know some dancing they know some dance especially like. <laughs> right yeah yeah and the rap especially when kid was upset that there was only one mic right when 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 it was that party part shireen and them yes hands down just even at the beginning the way they were hanging around they were just like okay they they done some stuff so they were a little bit more believable in that aspect to me or even hell i mean we we don't know how we don't know we don't know what happens in between they could have practiced on the way there. I don't know. Yeah, but that right. that was a little more believable in that case. And also, dude, the dances that they did together wasn't too over the top, so it was more believable. It wasn't like they were doing yeah. flips and all this yeah. kind of stuff. It's not like they were doing like uh, what you would see from Poriotics or I Am Me or – Yeah, or, uh, yeah. No, or it, like, uh, you know. Yeah, and that's why if you really look at it, their little routines were really short. It wasn't very long. Yeah. They were just yeah. – they were just going back and forth, just showing a little bit of it. So it was more believable in that aspect. Um, no, I agree. Play, play has more of – it's kind of like a rapper to me. And, it's, and for yeah. rapper is you can be good at lyrics, but do you have the style and the flow? Like I've seen rappers that probably don't have really good lyrics, but they have a better yeah. flow than yeah. everything. Play, That's ha- fair. play has a better style mm-hmm. than Kid. Kid can dance, yeah. but yeah. play knows how to work it his way, and he owns it. And that's the same thing with his rap. I think play was a better rapper because he made it his own thing. Um, yeah. Kid, kid got it because he got it at the end. He got the last stroke, so he got the last hurrah. But when kid went in at the beginning of that part, I think he 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 rocked it. So I think he was yeah. better in both. 
But what about you? Do you think it was felt routineish, or I mean, do you feel like they this kind of knew? What what are your what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think those two they had to all practice, right? Yeah. Because I mean, it'd be, it, like like we joked about in singing in the rain, you know. Yeah. Somehow that people just knew how to sing and dance, like whatever the routine was. And, and if they failed, like mm-hmm. they secretly kicked them out of the group. So, I mean, yeah. who knows? It could have been that's, that could have been the reason why, you know, the prequel to this movie, you know, <laughs> how, how Kid and Play actually met. That's how they, they got rid of the rap group that they were that they were both in. They were mm-hmm. just like, oh, yeah, I don't know the routine. All right. Screw y'all. Get the hell out. I, I would say um, <laughs> it would be ridiculous if it became a flash mob kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if everybody knew the routine or dance, that's a little bit like, okay, that's a little too much. That's too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only thing you would, the only time you would really know that is if it became, if it was like, like the 2000s corny songs mm-hmm. that everyone just knew the dance to, where like the Macarena or, um, or uh, was it the Soldier Boy and stuff like that? Yeah. 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 Um, and it wouldn't be as coordinated as that though. So now that we kind of got to the meat and all that stuff i guess my question i want to ask you is um did do you feel that stab in his gang the full force group do you feel like they overstayed their welcome in this movie do you think they have a really good pace because we're talking they did a lot in this movie weirdly enough from chasing kid to almost burning down the house party to going uh getting caught by the cops numerous times chasing kid again in prison all stuff do you think they overstayed their welcome or some of their parts should have got cut a little bit more for just big moments. What's your thoughts on that? I think they overstayed their welcome personally. Okay. I think they went a little bit like I, I, in my notes, I went, I said full force went full force. I mean, like they went like too hard for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause like that whole, like, you know, I like, I get the whole, like, let's go beat down. Let's go beat down. Uh, they were very violent, but I mean, like, like they have, they have to have a hatred for kid that is like stronger than like, like Biff had for like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Marty McFly because Biff hated Marty McFly, but I mean, just my God, like even Biff like stopped hating on Marty McFly at some point in life, you know. Like these guys wanted this dude dead. Like I don't care what you had said. Like if they just wanted to beat up the dude, that's one thing. But they wanted this dude dead. And I had no, no idea why. Mm-hmm. Like, they were just like, we just hate your face. We want to beat it in. Then, you know, like, I think the part where it was, you know, it was kind of fun. Like, I liked it in a way, though, because, like, the dude was like, you know, we're going to burn their house down. And, like, you know, <laughs> Pee- Pee-wee and the other dude was like, man, we, we we up for, like, beating someone down. But, like, seriously, like, <laughs> you crazy, man. <laughs> 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 like I like I like I'm like you know that 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 part that gag that part right there was funny to me and that worked the next they kind of kept going with it like mm-hmm. later on and I was just kind of like all right a little bit too much it was like yeah they did a little bit too much I think they didn't go clever enough with them because yeah, there was other right. ways they could have done with it the like I think the funny part, like you said, was the fun was the fire part because especially when people yeah. were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I just want to beat somebody down. I didn't want to burn people, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think it was like, "Why don't you guys break a window and go yeah. into the house?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. like they're too occupied. You could have snuck in. Like that could have been a clever way for to wrap this movie up better than just <laughs> we'll wait for him. And then when opportunity comes, we're going to beat them down. Oh, by coincidence, we're driving. Hey, kid came out in the middle of the road again. You know? Um, yeah, exactly. You know, you know what would have been funny, too? Just as, sorry, don't. Oh, I'm go just ahead. Gonna, just because I don't want to forget this real quick. Yep. Would have been funny if one of them just like came out of the bathroom and was like, oh, man, you should have saw what, you saw what I had <laughs> That would have been perfect. <laughs> and and, that just, and perfect. just, you know, moved on, right? Yes. That would make more sense for what they're yeah. used for than the way they wanted to do because the prison scene was pointless that could have been wrapped up with something else towards the end to tell you the truth yeah. like full force should have been the one that crashed that party and then they took care of them at the end of this movie then taking the yeah. girls home and wrapping it up because now the thing about this movie was the fact that like it felt like that the, they felt like the movie ended too soon so they needed to act extra because here you are taking yeah. Shireen home Sydney home House is shutting the place down. 
then we get Kid going to jail. And now yeah. let's go get Shireen again. Let's go get um, Sydney again. And let's go break him out of jail. And I mean, get yeah. uh, paid his bail. It's like, I feel like you were wrapping this up. Why are we back out here again? You know, it's like, why yeah. are we doing that? And that's because I feel like they wanted to push out more of Stab and Pee Wee and all them and to do more stuff. And yeah, I think they over, they way overstayed their welcome for that. Yeah, because I think I think you and I might not, we might probably agree with this one. It was like if you would have cut those guys, you would have added more to the father, yes. and you would have added more to to Witherspoon's uh, parts. Because I think those two were, I would say, the, especially the dad. I wouldn't say underutilized, but you you could see more of that of him because you can understand that he is absolutely pissed off about his son disobeying him and, and 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 especially a single overprotective dad should do not I wouldn't say overprotective but a single dad who who is trying to do his best as well to take care of his son should do yeah and you should see and it's it's funny too because the, the parts between those two characters throughout this movie were all improvised they improvised their lines i didn't know that so that 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 was pretty funny. So and I, I could I can imagine seeing those two continue doing it. So yeah, I agree. I would have taken full force. If you were to keep those minutes in, I would have taken the prison full for some of the full force scenes and given it to the dad and given it to uh to Witherspoon's character as well mm-hmm. in this movie just to see their interactions um in the movie. I think they would have made more of an impact. Yeah. Um but with all that, it's funny that the house party was so iconic and awesome in his own way that all the all the complaint kind of disappears a little bit. But the consequence yeah. of all of this is that you would automatically just go to that scene and be done, right? That's how I feel about this movie. I feel like if I pop this movie, I just want to watch that particular scene and then I'm done for the day kind of thing. Yeah. Instead of do I really care about the buildup for this? Maybe. Yeah. Do I really care about the ending? No. Yeah. You know? So, you know. Yeah, the ending was the ending was exactly right where you were at. It's like, if you were to really think about this movie, that was it, the house party and stuff, and then everything that happened during that time, and it's maybe a little bit before and a little bit after mm-hmm. the house party, but, like, the end in the very beginning are two things you can let go and be fine. Yeah, I... I would personally tell somebody if they want, decide to watch a movie, I say it is worth – to me personally, it's worth getting to that party. And, mm-hmm. I, and once you get to that party and you're done, you're welcome to stop watching it after that. Um, with that too, I do enjoy movie. I do enjoy movies like this where there's a, a person or a group of people trying to get to this destination and just stuff gets in the way. i always been a sucker yeah. for those kind of movies. You know? Yeah. It's like those journey, like, I don't, that was one of the things I was talking to somebody about um, more recently is like, the movie plots don't have to be necessarily complicated for me, but it just, just that journey from like where you started to where you ended, mm-hmm. just enjoying that journey along the way means so much more to me. And I think that journey that we follow these two from beginning to end, well, not necessarily the end, but from journey to the house party and a little bit after, um, I think kind of what you're saying that that means a lot Mm -hmm. it's it's, yeah and then last thing and then i'll leave you to do your last words is um also i would cut some of the white cops moments they were a little over over the use in there um yes i think it was kind of kind of silly they kept coming at the right time at the right place every time um and yeah, sure I, they were the only white white guys in this movie. Yeah, and they they made them try too hard. They kind of like um, <laughs> they kind of spike lead it a little bit with the whole like, all right, repeat after me before you go. I am somebody, and I'm like, okay. And I felt like like the the people at the dinner at the dinner party with uh by the way uh George Clinton is the DJ there. Um, yeah. You know, I, I felt what they were going through, like, oh, come on, man. I was like, yeah, come on with it. Why is this in the movie? I was like, let's move on. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was interesting to see that part because I'm like, all right, so it's not negative. It's not necessarily a fully negative connotation for the cops. 
which is interesting because I think a lot of the movies before and prior, prior like kind of cultural th- thoughts is that, you know, you just hate the police mm-hmm. no matter what. So I thought that part was kind of neat that it wasn't, so it wasn't extremely negative. The fact that they kept showing up and harassing these guys, that was kind of annoying. Yeah. And I do agree with you. I think that was a little bit too much as to it uh, too as well. Okay. Anything else you want to uh, add before we get to it? Yeah. You know, a lot of things when it comes to movies, whenever you and I watch, there's a few things. You know, if you were in the situation, you know, out of the ladies as well, you know, who would you have chosen? In the moment? Like, what were we talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not sitting here thinking about it, but if I was at that party, and yeah. I was in the moment, no lie, it'd probably be Shireen. Shireen really? just, oh yeah, oh yeah, just because of the look. Okay. You know? Because I'm thinking of the young me. Like if I'm going to that party, like I want her. I'll feel. I'll. Yes. I'll figure out with her whole story. Is I wanted. I want to dance with her, and I want to get her number. You gotcha. Know? Okay. You know. That's, See, I would have chosen. I would have chosen Sydney myself. Yeah, but I just know that my high school mindset would be like, oh, if I get that girl, oh, that'd be amazing. Because Serene was. She's beautiful. She was beautiful in this movie. So I, I would go for her. So. Oh, I, I think I think both of them are, are absolutely mm-hmm. uh, beautiful too, as well. And uh, you know, it's interesting. I would chose in Sydney, and if you didn't know, which I didn't know, uh, Tisha Campbell is mm-hmm. actually born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Didn't know that. Didn't know that either. Hmm. Yeah, she was born here. Now she grew up in Newark, New Jersey, but she was born here in Oklahoma City. Which so is, she definitely moved at a very young age. Yeah, she had to because I mean, it's like Brad Pitt being born in Oklahoma. And of course, we didn't really know. Mm-hmm. So. So, I think the fun the fun question between you and I is: uh, which one of us is kid and which one of us is play? Oh, I be I I definitely be play. You be game. I mean, you be kid. Always, uh, all because they, I know that I be the one setting the party up. I can mm-hmm. picture myself setting the party, getting everybody, going. and I know you be the one. Honestly, like it's weird. Like you you would be kid, but you wouldn't be fully kid. I feel yeah. like that you would be a little bit more goofier than kid mm-hmm. in a weird way. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I could picture you the one writing the lyrics and me just kind of just freestyling it. Yeah. I could picture that definitely. That um, one's true. Yeah. Yeah. Def- I can definitely see that. Um, now, I don't know what you would be like if those girls just put you on blast, like called you out on your dance. I don't know how you would react to that, but I know I'd be that one jumping in like, let me yeah. show you how we do it. <laughs> so. you'll, be like, you'll be like, you'll be like, no, 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 we can't stop now, man. It's just like, you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna do. It's like, hey, that hit, we're gonna do that number. Remember what I showed you, you know? Mm-hmm. I'd and, be like, all right. And I'd be the one, unfortunate oh, oh. someone messes up my toilet. <laughs> yeah. That's probably yeah. what happened, happened to me. Yeah. Um, what a, do you agree, or do you think it's the other way around? No, I actually, I actually do agree. I think it w- it would be the fact that we'd be kid and play in that aspect too, as well. Um, where I would be more kid and you would be more play. Mm-hmm. That's how I, that's how I ended up feeling too. I mean, there's obviously different aspects of 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 them that in the movie that is going to be different than what we are in real life. But I can see that happening too, as well. And then and mm-hmm. uh, and just just like little things and what they do and stuff like that, that I'm like, all right, yeah, I can see that. Now being- our, our, one of our, one of our special guys that comes on, on some of our bonus episodes, Jerome, AKA mm-hmm. Sandrock on Twitter. He would definitely be Bilal. He would be the DJ. Yeah. Bilal. Yeah. He, he would be definitely Bilal. be the DJ. Say, hey, stop hitting. Stop hitting the table. I mix yeah. it. <laughs> I spent a lot in my PC. Let it go. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess I never really asked you this question at the beginning sure. of this, but like, would you, just you yourself, not kid or play, but if you walked into that party, would you dance? Or would you be kind of, be a bit of a wallflower? I'd be a wallflower. I okay. mean, it, it's in my nature even now, but like, I'm more prone to dance now because I don't care as much. Okay. If I could, no, I would. I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't care as much, but like back then I was a little bit more self-conscious about like myself and okay. just kind of like, how I was perceived I was kind of like that nerdy kid it was weird because I was nerdy but then again I was also a jock too in a weird way because I played football and played basketball for for high school or for that middle school and high school too so mm-hmm. 
And, uh, but yeah, I was a little bit more self-conscious during that time. I didn't want to F things up and make myself, my, make my quote unquote cred go down lower. Yeah. I understand. So that. I got out, I got more out of my show when I got to college. So yeah, that was I think what would happen if someone taught you some moves, maybe yeah. that'd be different coming in there. Cause you could, at yeah. least you have a signature move. <laughs> like, yeah. This is all I do. This is all I do. This is all I do. Just a dice roll. This is all I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what was interesting? I was sitting there watching them dance, like one of her kid or one of her uh, kid was dancing with a uh, groove, and they were doing that that kind of like whatever. Yeah, I was like, you know, I could do that. Why didn't anyone teach me that? I could have just did that, that, like you know, dances and stuff. It's like a, it's like a weird like. Uh, um, Dude, it is a weird dance. It's a little bit like, it's like a, oh, it's a, weird a little dance. bit like what? I was gonna say it's kind of like the, like do the Humpty Hump, but a little something else with it. Because you're so like. I was like you know, like the Western, like, you know, like the cowboy dances and stuff, yeah. like that, whatever, like the do si do. That's what yeah. I was thinking. It's kind of like a do si do in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I was like, all right, you know, I could have did that back in the day. But I, someone would just told me I needed to do that standing behind someone other than just standing and just kind of trying to play, mm-hmm. trying to follow their hips or whatever. Yeah, I think that would probably happen. I think that based on what you told me, I think it would take a girl to pull you in. Like, yeah. like a Shireen, Shireen would pull yeah. you in, like dance with me because you're not going to say no, <laughs> you know, just like, oh, yeah, she's hot. she wants to dance with me. Okay. You know, just to bring you in and bring in the mood. I feel like there are some people that need to be pushed in instead of voluntarily going in. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. For, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and that during that point, yeah, a little bit more now, uh, a little bit less now, but definitely during that period of my time. Okay. So. Okay. I would definitely agree with you 110%. Ain't my type of hype, baby. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so are we ready for the House Party Awards? So we're going to go with the House Party Awards. You want to start it off? Hell yeah. So my first award is called Fresh Like a Million Bucks. And mm-hmm. if you know this movie very well, there is a lot, a lot of outfits. Because when you go to a party... Your goal is to stand out from everybody else. That's just a rule of a house party. That's a rule of going to club. How good do I look, right? This is what Jeremy says now, but he won't. He won't agree with. Uh, he won't agree with Romeo Vestai. So <laughs> they dressed up the way they did. Oh, we'll go listen to that recording. <laughs> oh, oh, it's like a Halloween party in there. Anyways, um, and the thing about this movie too, it's awesome because it sh- it kind of gives you a demonstration of what '90s was like. These were the clothes they were like in the '90s. Where everybody was trying trying to find some way to stand out, and there now, granted, at the party, there are some clothes in there that are kind of like, eh, it is what it is. But then there is some um, clothes where it's like, the hell did you get that ad? You know, like where where did you go? <clears throat> so my award is best outfit, and um, it's very important for this. Mo- I think this is a very important award for this movie particularly because. You know, the outfit really makes you shout out, you know, yeah. stand out regardless. And especially for the main cast, they had to stand out in their own way. You couldn't wear just normal clothes like Kid. Kid, to me, had the most boringest clothes out of everybody. Yeah. And he is not nominated in this award. Um, but yeah. but there are some odd ones out there, but I just want to kind of point out. So um, the way it works, of course, is I have mine. And if Nam wants to add some more entries, he's more welcome to. So my first award, my first nominee for the award is Chill. And Chill yeah. is right with Groove. He's right beside uh, Groove to the movie. He's the one of the people that dance. He's the one who's like scandalous. He's he's the one with the black hat. With I don't know what you describe him, Nam. They're like looks like coins around the rim of the hat, per se. Yeah, little co- either little coins or little mirrors or whatever. Yeah, around, yeah. Around and like then uh, he's, he's wearing got a- the red suspenders on too as well. Yeah, so he's wearing black shirt with red suspenders, but it's where he has word design on his shirt. But the only way I can really describe it to you, they look like pina- uh, piano keys. Yes. So that's the best way Sounds I can put it. Yeah. But there is words on it's words, but it's just blown up where it carries yeah. from the front to the back. But if you yeah. saw it from a distance, it looks like piano keys. And then if you look really close, he's wearing short black pants and quote unquote on the on the right side. No, left side. It says, shut the F up. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's that's one. That's chill. Number two is play, a.k.a. Larry sure. Johnson. Um, he's wearing a turquoise shirt with um, um, a white tie, wearing a yellowish tan shirt 
with he turquoise is, pants. He is the epitome of the Charlotte Hornet colors right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for him. You have um you have uh Bilal. He's wearing an orange dress shirt and over it an African style vest. And he's wearing a bunch of necklace stuff, and then he's wearing just a normal black hat. Yeah. Um, not maybe like Kenta Kunte kind of, not that at that level, but he's more not, like yeah. he's, he's definitely representing. It's, repre- his, it's, it's a representation. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Kind of like poetic justice. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like a poetic that. justice outfit. So I wouldn't give that. Um, then you have Shireen wearing basically mm-hmm. a one piece with a black belt and uh, wearing a, a short red jacket. Over it, like short to the, uh, it cuts off at the waist, and then um, she's wearing these watermelon earrings. Uh huh. And so, and then you have Sydney, and she's wearing a purple sports bra under a yellow vest jacket, and it has a couple little designs on there. They look like kind of like mm-hmm. little checkers, little little bit of designs here and there, little swirls and stuff like that. Um, then some yellow pants to to go with that and then it looked like she's wearing a little bit of shan- sandal shoes that kind of stuck out here because you saw a lot of ankle during her dance yeah. part and whatnot and so those are my um five nominees do you have any do you want to add no i think you nailed it on the dot i think those are the ones that stood out to me the most um out of the out of every character in the movie besides besides <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't say if you had the worst best dress outfits it would the worst outfits it would definitely go to full force and uh the dad. oh my gosh <laughs> where did they get those clothes at especially stab like i don't i don't care who you are you can't rock a shirt with these little bitty cuts on the side like this it's like oh but, but that was like a hard 80s style right it was kind of like it was a, awful in that way yeah what, what's that what's it oh, i can't think of his name now i don't know why i can't think of his name yeah we do we do his dance all the time bobby brown we joke about huh? no We're no we bobby joke brown. about his dance all the time um oh god he has the song he has the one song from the 80s and he it was like the aqua team like we watched the aqua team scene oh he cameo, like cameo cameo yeah, cameo yeah it's yeah like yeah that, it's like that cameo like Word up. hard like you know, look that he's yeah, got yeah. going on. I, you know what would have made this movie better if someone dressed up as Show Enough? Why not? Sh- sh- Why up. not? I think it would have worked. I mm. think it would have worked. Yeah, but I agree with you. I think those five, those five were uh, the, no- the the nominees. So for me, go ahead. You want me to go ahead and name what I thought out of those five? Can I? May I? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So oh, I think right. who won it? Honestly, now. Chill was rocking it. Like, regardless of the pants and shut the F up, it stand out a lot. Like, you knew where he was in the group. <laughs> he stood out in the butt. But I have to give this Shireen. Like, Shireen was looking so good in her outfit, and she was rocking it. It fit her okay. in any – it fit her perfectly for what she's doing. Yeah. Even with her dance, she was just rocking it. Um, not a lot of women that I have seen can rock a one-piece, but she yeah. did it. And she rocked it very, very well. So Shireen, to me, is the winner on this one. What about you? Okay, that's fair. You know, I'm going to go with Chill. Okay. Because I agree with you. Because I, I, for me, that's my own personal style, too. Is that I is? Okay. Wear, that I would wear that. Style. Now, I wouldn't wear something on my pants that would say, like, F off or anything. But mm-hmm. I totally, I have totally rocked the suspenders and stuff like that before um when i go to work and stuff like that and i even had the suspenders just kind of hanging off the side the side of the side mm-hmm. of me too as well and so i think i think chill to me represented or was was very stylish in that aspect i you know play in a weird way looked cool but i mean it was very i think it was just this color scheme that kind of that kind of made him stand out a lot more mm-hmm. versus the clothing because I would I would say Bilal's clothing as well was probably one that stood out to me that I thought was pretty cool too. But Chill was my guy. Okay. All right. So All right. on to your award. So my award is is the uh, most valuable character award, which is probably you know we we t- we talk about it in basketball stuff like the most valuable player. It's not necessarily the best person in the movie, but. Or what you perceive as the best person, but the person that meant the most to, or I guess meant a lot to the movie. And once they disappeared from the movie, it wouldn't be as good or or the same. 
So the most valuable character award. So I have um, a few nominees here. Okay. And of course, I, I know you'll add some more here. So because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of valuable characters in this too. So the first one is Bilal. I think he. I think he was kind of like that. That third amigo that needed to be there. Mm -hmm. Um. Other valuable characters too, as you can say, kid as as well, because this movie I think was more about kid than it was play. Mm -hmm. Um, the dad is the third choice. You can make an argument for both Sheree, Shireen, and uh, and uh, Sydney. and Sydney, mm -hmm. but if I had to choose, those would be my five. I feel as the most valuable characters in this movie. Um. I would actually put Chill and, uh, Chill and Groove in there as a bundle because okay. they had a, like they helped fill out some of the dead time that they had. Um, even the I enjoyed every part they were in, to tell you mm -hmm. the truth, from the drinking to getting cock blocked by uh, play, getting Shireen to the park, taking him home. And throwing Groove in front of their knocking and running, and he <laughs> fell in front of the front door. So like they they definitely. Sp kept it going too in their own way so i definitely would th they deserve a mention too yeah they get honorable mention i can i can agree with that yeah. so who do you think was the most valuable character to uh, you in this movie balau hands down balau. um mm -hmm, okay. yeah from the moment where from the lunchroom at the very beginning he already shined like you know hey man i got your back you know you gonna let him do yeah. that to you i got your back yeah. you know to the part where he they really made him shine from his room to him leaving, um, being left by play for this for this girl, and to the point where like his Mac, he was macking everything and just getting called off by bad breath. He had he had every moment he was in was pretty funny. The only part that was awkward was it. I don't know if he made it awkward or that scene was just awkward, but it was after the rap thing, and he's like, "Well, anything you can do, I I can do better." And that's the part that kind of was the most awkward part. Everything else was fine, but that was yeah. the most awkward part. But yeah, <laughs> which is weird um, because I thought he was going to be cut off real early in the movie, like real early. But he, you know, yeah. he still got his spark, especially like the charade part. That's why one of the freaking funny part, charade, charade. Like, you know, he was just getting his whole part. And also, too, he really cared about kid and play in his own way, especially he called out play, like telling him, like, come on, man. Let's go get kid. You know, he was there. I think Bilal deserves this one. Go ahead. You know, it was a tough choice because I was debating whether the dad or, or Bilal was, was the two choices, or the two choices I think that really kind of were valuable in this movie. And I'm going to lean towards Bilal too as well because I wish there would have been more with the dad. But I think that was one of those things that, you know, we can talk about this later on if we ever get to it. But, you know, in House Party 2, that was kind of missing. Uh, you was, know, was I'm glad dad. you said that because, like, before this recording, I just finished watching that movie. So, go on. I did. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, I think the, 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 the dad, because, I mean, in House Party 2, like, you know, you're in college, you can do whatever now. So, you don't really have that, that, that factor of trying to keep some or trying to, like, teach you a good lesson, a wholesome lesson versus like, you know, holding you back. So now I don't know if you're aware of, but you knew that he passed away before. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just making yeah. sure okay. that he passed away before, but I'm, I was like, I think his character, I think his character did mean something overall. <sighs> um, but I think Bilal too was kind of like that weird glue guy that kind of held it all together for everyone else mm -hmm. in, reluctantly. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just kind of like the comic that comic relief that you needed when when there was a, a little bit more of the dead time too as well, mm -hmm. and some of the cringy moments too where you're just like, yeah, we all have that friend, that yes. one friend, that's yes, just, that, that's just that way too as well. So I, I agree with you. I think Balau is probably going to get this award too as well. I will to say I do give the dad credit. At least he made it to the party and looked for him. Yes, but you're that right. Was I, I wish he got more. I wish yeah. he, especially like if you if kid was in jail, I wish it was his dad the one that picked him up. Oh God, because his dad would have whooped his. That tail. would have been more memorable than getting him and then sneaking in, and then he comes at the very end with a belt. So that would have been yeah. a little bit more special in that kind of way. Um, but no, yeah. Bilal, Bilal, I think 
if you we watching that movie, you forget that he was in a lot of he was in a lot of scenes. They were just quick yeah. scenes, but he was in a lot yeah. of scenes, and so him messing with his uh with play putting his his dj equipment and all that stuff in the car was hilarious oh yeah no no what are you doing no no come on no yeah no that was that was that was freaking funny and i love the fact that it cracks me up where uh balal makes the time to play a certain song so he can go out and mac on people yeah so that's kind of clever the way he's like okay play this slow that's- and try to get with a girl this song's long enough let me go do this you That's know. right. Then he tried to hit up on he, he tried to hit up on Sydney. That was hilarious. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, why is it every time? Why is girls always get t- so tired? I was like, what do you go dance with these other girls? Like, no, they need to go home. They need to get their beauty sleep. <laughs> yeah. So beat. Talking about parts that didn't age well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And so you're just like, Dang. but you know. You know, if you guys don't go back if, for the audience, if you guys don't go back and watch this movie, you know, you have a possibility of seeing a remake or even a re- reimagination of this movie as well. Because the great LeBron James is wanting to make a remake of this movie. Not really a remake, but a reimagining of this movie because it meant something to him growing up. So you guys get that opportunity at some point down the line. I don't know when. But as always, we always end our show with the Rotten Tomato meter. Can I, can I say go something ahead. about that re- remake? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. This I'll make it real quick. Yeah, sure. If you're going to do the remake, the thing about House Party to me, and I thought about this too. I thought about like if a remake how it work. the The situation about House Party made sense at the time that it was made, and doing any other House Party in a modern time to me as i now i could be 100 percent wrong later but as i speak now i feel like that it just wouldn't work than what it was so if i did a remake i would try to base it at the time that it was i would make it a 90s style film don't have to be it don't have to be blow for blow for like that movie but set in a 90s style like old school style and not make it modern because the music and all the stuff just fit for what that is and on top of that if you make a modern one it's tough because no one goes no one has house parties like that anymore like that so you have to make it fit in that time to me that's all i'll say about that so anyways go on no it would be interesting too i mean we'll we'll get i guess we'll get a better view of what it's going to be like how he has his own reimagination about things Mm -hmm. when we uh review space jam 2 at some point down the line ron james if you ever listen to the show or hear anything shout out please put us in the movie (laughs) <laughs> That's one of them. Yeah, we'll we'll be uh, grooving, uh, grooving, uh, chill. Don't worry. Yeah. Ain't my type this. of hype, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I do agree with you. I, I am kind of curious on how he would do. He said he wouldn't do a blow by blow remake of like like he would like House Party is, but he would do it kind of like a, a new a whole new style or a whole new look to it. So it would be kind of interesting to see. But going to our tomato meter, the Rotten Tomatoes meter. Which was actually interesting, in my opinion, mm-hmm. to see these scores. Uh, it is up to us to decide whether or not we lean towards more towards the critics or the audience, and for you guys too as well. Because at times, you know, we don't want to be too critical about a movie, but again, you know, we're not necessarily casual audience sometimes too as well, or at least the conversations conversations that Jeremy and I have on the regular about movies. So the Rotten Tomato meter has this movie rated. The critics have this movie rated at a ninety-three percent of fresh rating, with twenty-eight reviewers. And Ebert, if you don't know, rated this three out of four stars. So good for good for that. And the audience, surprisingly to me, is usually the flip. Though the audience gave this an eighty-two percent out of thirty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-two reviews. Jeremy, which way do you lean? This is a classic, not only for uh, hip hop, for black culture, um, but as a party movie. This is a classic party movie. Um, it has a bunch of bumpy roads with a fantastic dance scene, the house party itself. But it sucks that if I look at the movie, the whole thing is that these bumpy roads just knocks that 90 that 90 for me 
So I'm 82. Yeah, I, I think you and I are going to agree with this one. We don't always do. I think generally you and I have, I think we've been doing this long enough that you and I have like, kind of had the same kind of taste in what we look into. Mm-hmm. So I too will lean towards an 82% because at a 93%, and I think uh, kind of like our last movie too as well, um, you know, um, when you're so high in the 90s, I mean, you really have to enjoy the movie through and through and then not really feel, to me, not really feel superbly bored in, in some of the parts of the movie or just felt like the, some of the movies, some parts of the movie just didn't, shouldn't have existed. Or everything else was so good that you'd, you'd, you'd let that go. Um, the movie was really good through and through, and I'd watch it again, and I enjoyed watching it. But for a 93%, whether I enjoyed it from start to finish, I don't necessarily agree that I felt that in that way. So I didn't feel a 93 I felt the 82% too as well with the audience scores. Like, I enjoyed the movie. It was a fun movie. I'll watch it again. But, I mean... I, I'm not going to enjoy watching the last, like, I would say probably the last what, 15 to 20 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that part to me was kind of kind of down for me too as well. So, All right. That was good. All right. As you know, for your listeners and watchers, we are part of the In-Game Boss program, Network of Game and other variety shows. So definitely check out all our listening spots that are in the description down below. If you are watching us on YouTube, please help us out by subscribing to the network. And so you can just be updated with everything that's going on. And enjoy all our other great content on here. But it's not over. We have a bunch of more movies to go for this set that we have. We're excited to give you more. And tell us your thoughts down below in the comment box if you're watching on YouTube. Did you like House Party? Did you like the other th- other two house parties afterwards? What do you think? Who was better, kid or play? Was what do you think had the best outfit? We would love to hear your comments and you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, Nam, anything else you want to add before we uh, wrap this party up? <laughs> uh, not too much, man, guys. Okay. You know, if you enjoy our content, please let us know. If you dislike our content or have some criticisms for us, please let us know. We, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys, and we'd love to get better. Um, without a doubt and of course you know definitely check out some of the movies that we're talking about you know so you can see and kind of get that feeling because i definitely recommend house party to to anyone to go see at the very T-O-O. least one time. t-o-o not two t-o-o yeah yeah <laughs> not dumb and dumb or two <laughs> <T-O>. <laughs> yeah yeah but definitely check it out next you know um hopefully you know leave us some suggestions or ideas too as well as Movies that you may want us to talk about because, you know, who knows, you know, there it might be a movie that we didn't think about. And all of a sudden we look at it and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, we definitely need to check that out again because it's it's been a long, 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 long time. Okay. So well, with enjoy that, the ride, man. Thank you guys for checking us out. All right. With that, we will catch you on our next episode. Your love is so good. Your love is so good. Eat my type of hype, baby.